We are making the French Laundry's Foie Gras Au Tonchon with pickled cherry. This has to be one of the easiest foie recipes I've ever made. You don't really have to worry about overcooking it. It just takes a little bit of planning. Let's cook some foie. Remove the foie from the packaging and give it a rinse under cold water. Keeping the foie in the package up until this point will prevent oxidization. Then dry off all the water. Foie comes in three different grades, A, B, and C. A being the best, meaning that it's the largest in size and has the least imperfections. Chef Keller says for torsions, you want to usually go for grade B. A will also work, but he mentions you want to avoid grade C. There's only a couple producers of foie gras, so what you're able to buy at home is the same as what restaurants are using. What you want to look for when you receive it is no imperfections. You want a light pink color, almost verging on pink when you cut into it. The recipe calls for one and a fourth pounds, which most grade Bs are. This one is one and three fourths, so I remove the small lobe. Normally you want to add this in. Soak in milk overnight or up to 24 hours. I wasn't able to fully submerge mine, so I flipped it halfway in the soak. Once the soak is complete, rinse the foie and dry it between towels. To clean it, flip the foie over and butterfly it. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit the record for that. Pick through the foie and pull out the primary and as many small veins as possible. Foie is like Play-Doh and will come back together, so don't worry about breaking it up. However, it is important to keep the outer membrane intact. If you are using the small lobe, do the same process and add it on top of the large lobe. For the cure, blend 1 gram of white peppercorn. Since it's such a minuscule amount, pulse in the spice blender to help blend it up. Mix together 6 grams of kosher salt, the 1 gram of white pepper, 1 gram of sugar, with 2 grams of curing salt. Curing salt will extend the shelf life and help keep the foie a pinkish color, but it can be substitute for an additional 3 grams of salt. Sprinkle half the cure onto the first side, then flip into the container. Be careful. It is very fragile. Add the remaining half of the curing salt then press into the foie. Cover with plastic wrap to help prevent oxidization and a lid. Place in the fridge for 24 hours. To form the foie, place it cold from the fridge onto some parchment paper. This helps determine the size of the torsion. Use the parchment paper to shape the torsion. Roll it on the table to create a round log. Ideally, you are looking for three and a half inches wide. Using a one foot wide, two foot long piece of cheesecloth, tightly roll the foie. Use a friend or a heavy object to hold down the cheesecloth. Tie the end with some butcher twine, then wrap the string towards the torsion. This will help tighten the foie, helping to compact it. Then repeat on the other side. This should force some of the foie out of the cheesecloth. Tie three strings around the foie. These are guidelines for later. Cook the foie by poaching in chicken stock or water for 90 seconds. My widest pot wouldn't submerge the foie, so I baste it with stock and rotate it as I cooked it. Place it into an ice bath to stop the cooking for a minute or so. Using a thin towel, wrap the foie into the towel and tie it the same way as before. In French, torchon means dish towel. You will have lost some volume, so use the string to know the thickness. Hang the foie in your fridge for 24 hours to finish curing. You might have to get creative with how you hang it. To prepare the cherries, bend the tines of the fork so that you have a straight tine and a curved one. Poke a hole into the bottom of the cherry then gently go around the pit. Take the curved tine and pull out the pit. Going around the pit in multiple spots and gently pulling will help prevent the seed from breaking the cherry. Add 24 cherries to a pot with 125 milliliters of red wine vinegar, 50 grams of sugar, and 60 milliliters of water. Bring it up to a simmer, then pour off into a separate container. Let them marinate in the fridge for 24 hours. This can be done to any seasonal fruit using the same procedure. For tender fruit like berries, pour over the hot pickling liquid and use vinegars that work best for the fruit. Apple cider vinegar works better than red wine vinegar for apples. For the croutons, slice brioche bread 1 4th inch thick and use a ring mold to punch out the rounds. Add extra virgin olive oil to a sheet tray, then lay out the brioche rounds onto the tray. Drizzle, then brush with the olive oil. Sprinkle with kosher salt, then place into a 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius oven. Bake for 10 to 15 minutes until GBD, flipping after 7 minutes. Once evenly golden, remove from the oven, flip them over again, and let them cool on the sheet tray. In the book, he talks about the law of diminishing returns, which means that the more bites you take of something, the more mundane it becomes. A lot of cooks and chefs will add a lot of ingredients to a dish to try to make it more interesting, but it just makes it confusing. What he talks about is concentration of flavors. So you taking one ingredient and doing many different techniques on it, and each technique will bring out a different flavor. But when you have special ingredients like foie gras that people don't eat a lot, 
You don't have to worry about overcomplicating it. You just have to let that product speak for itself. Unwrap the foie from the towel and the cheesecloth. Trim off the ends of the foie and slice into four even pieces. Use a ring roll to move the oxidized foie. This is solely for presentation and does not affect flavor. Toss a handful of baby arugula with 18 tiny mint leaves. Dress with extra virgin olive oil and kosher salt. Place the arugula behind the foie, add the brioche rounds, and stack up the cherries. The cherries will drip, and it's best to blot them on a paper towel first. Finish with celery. If you enjoyed this video, you gotta check out this French Laundry Tasty Menu next.